541 example 12 from Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics 2nd Edition. Um, this one is cool because it takes a really hard problem and it makes it easy. Uh, this problem of having, so we have an infinite solenoid um, with n turns per unit length, radius r, current i. And it goes on to infinity, so we can't use all the identities we discovered in 541 because we cannot use that, um, that, um, that step where we said that the uh, magnetic field or the current uh, at infinity is zero because it's not. It goes on forever, but that's okay. So here's the cute method. He calls this cute. So um, if you're into anime, anyway. <laughs> so we're going to take the, um, the A vector and go around some loop, doesn't matter what. And we're going to notice that using Stokes theorem, that's the same as the curl of A uh, with, dotted with the DA vector. Okay, this is Stokes. And well, what's the curl of A? That's the B. And what is that? That's like the magnetic flux. Okay. Um, just like we had electric flux, this is the magnetic flux. How much of the magnetic field is passing through that area that we're using? Um, so this is the general rule. Um, so remember we had uh, Ampere's law, where we said you go around a loop and you do b dot dl, and you go, oh, that's equal to the current enclosed. But here we have going around the a of the loop, and we get the flux, the magnetic flux. So um, um, if we have a symmetrical problem here, then we can apply this Amperean loop and uh, we'll be done. Well, a infinite uh, solenoid with n turns per unit length current i has a magnetic field on the inside of u mu naught n i. That's all it is. It's pretty simple. Um, and so, what is the magnetic flux through a certain volume, through, through, through a certain surface? Well, let's do this. So, we have our infinite solenoid going like this. I'm doing pretty good. Where is that? Where, I was worried that was going to turn like a Charlie Brown dust cloud. Um, so if we take a, um, a horizontal loop like that in the green, okay, a circle centered on cylindrical coordinates, all that kind of stuff. So we can calculate that. That's the uh, integral of a vector dot dl vector. Well, that's just going to be, um, since b is constant, a is going to be constant. So that's just a times uh, the circumference, which is 2 pi r, whatever radius we chose to use out there. And that's going to be equal to, um, uh, I'm sorry, integral b vector dot dl, the a vector, the magnetic flux, which is just basically it's constant magnetic field. And the what's the surface area? That's pi r squared. OK, so bringing those two together, we get a is equal to um, mu naught on top. There's an n on top, an i on top, and an extra r. And we got to divide by 2. And which direction? That's in the phi hat direction, cylindrical, co uh, cylindrical coordinates. So it's pointing around in that direction. OK, so what about outside? So what if we take a big loop and go outside? OK, well, uh, same kind of thing. So we get uh, a of 2, uh, I'm sorry, a of 2 pi r is equal to, and this time it's not r squared, because um, only the stuff on the inside of the solenoid contributor, there's no magnetic field outside. Um, so we get um, mu naught n i pi, the radius of the solenoid squared. Okay, so we get a is equal to um, mu naught n i all over 2 r squared over r in the phi hat direction. Okay, that's for r is greater than r. This is for r is less than r. There is our solution. And if you don't think that's right, then we can do our two little checks. Is the divergence of a zero? By inspection, yes, there's no phi dependence here. By inspection, yes, there's no phi dependence there. Okay, is the curl of a, is that equal b? So the curl of a. Okay, so let's flip, 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 flip. So the curl of A in cylindrical coordinates, um, the derivative with respect to R is the only thing we're uh, thinking about, because there's only R in there. And indeed, we have, for the last term, we get 1 over R of d by dr of the R times the V component. Um, I'm sorry, the, the V components. So R times this, so it's... Um, 
and on the inside it's going to be r squared times something. On the outside it's going to be r divided by r zero, okay? r times the a in the phi direction. And the other one's going to be zero because there's no phi dependence, and that's in the z hat direction. Okay, so very quickly checking with that, seeing if we get our, our magnetic field back. So on the outside, r times this, well there's no r anymore, so you take the derivative with respect to r, that's zero. So no magnetic field on the outside, which is correct. On the inside, we get r times this, so we have an r squared. What's the root of that? It's just 2r, so the 2's cancel. We get mu naught and ni over r. Is that right? Hold on. Oh, mu naught ni r divided by r, and then that gives you mu naught ni. So it gives you the stuff back. So it works. Hooray! That was simple. That was a hard problem made simple by using advanced mathematics. So hope you enjoyed this. Um, take time to, there's a ton of problems after this section. Take time to work through them and struggle. And, and learn new techniques to solve hard problems. So, hope you had fun. Thanks, bye.